Hey kids, Miss McGuire here. You ready for another ELA lesson? All right, we are starting a new unit. Um, this one is I can compare and contrast nonfiction passages. So we have done this before in class. This, uh, but the difference is we are using nonfiction text instead of fiction stories. So um, this is a really fun unit, and I'm excited about it. Um, you guys are going to learn a lot about all different kinds of animals, and um, today you, we are exploring um, some desert animals. We're going to look at a couple of different birds and a couple of different snakes, and you're going to get to com compare and contrast those. So let's take a look at our EQs first. Um, what does it mean to compare and contrast? Why would you compare two versions of the same topic? How would you compare two passages? And why is it important to compare and contrast? So um, we'll be thinking about those as we um, work on our lesson today. So we've got two stories for you. One is about a cactus run and one is about a road runner. So I'm going to show you how we are going to use a Venn diagram to compare those. And um, then we will, then you on your own are going to compare a rattlesnake and a king snake. So I've got two stories for you there to read on your own. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here. So the cactus run. Um, the cactus wren is the state bird of Arizona. It lives in hot, dry climates, and it loves, sorry, I'm trying to find a good spot for my face here. <laughs> it loves Choya cactus, and it will use the cactus as a shelter to sleep at night and to build their football-sized nest, huge nest. It's a long beak with speckled brown feathers, and the cactus wren likes hopping around in the brush. Some of its favorite foods um, of the cactus wren are bugs, fruit, and seeds. Next time you are on a hike, look out, look near the choya to see if you can spot a cactus wren. So cactus wrens are going to be um, pretty much anywhere near those choya cactus, um, and you can see them jumping around on the ground, searching for bugs, fruit, and different seeds that have dropped. Um, pretty easy to spot, and they are um, more of kind of a bold bird, so you'll be able to see and take a look at them without them being too scared of you. Um, all right, but here's a couple of pictures and here's a picture of that Choya cactus that I was talking about. It is the long branchy type cactus that has a ton of pricklies on it. So you don't want to get too near that. But inside, if you take a look on your next hike, um, you can see pretty much any Choya cactus is going to have a bird's nest in it. Most of them do. So um, if you're looking to find a bird's nest, you might be able to find one of those cactus wren's um, nests in there and take a look at it. But just be careful around it because those um, cactus branches on these, the choya cactus easily drop off and um, you don't want to step on it or um, get yourself pricked. But just be careful around it, but have fun looking for those cactus wrens. All right, the next one um, we're going to take a look at is the Roadrunner. So the Roadrunner lives in the hot desert of Arizona or other desert to hot to dry climate areas. It has a very long tail and neck and legs with a spotted body. Roadrunners do not like to fly. They would rather just run. They can run up to 15 miles per hour. Can you believe it? Its speed helps the bird to catch lizards, mice, and snakes to eat. The roadrunner builds its nest in cacti, which is the plural form of cactus, um, meaning more than one, specifically choya or desert trees. Um, roadrunners are fast birds. Um, and uh, there are some commonalities between the roadrunner and the cactus wren, so we're going to take a look at those. Um, and here is a couple pictures here. And you can see it right here with his feathery head right there. It's kind of kind of cute to look at. Um, and then right here, you can see he's got a lizard in his mouth there. Very fast um, um, and can outrun uh, and catch up to, so they can catch up to those, uh, their prey, which is those, those mice and um, rodents and different kind of things too. Okay, so let's take a look at how we're gonna fill this Venn diagram out digitally. And I wanna share with you a couple of digital tools and we have worked a little bit with those Venn diagrams, but we're going to continue to work on them. And I've added a couple of features to make it a little bit more easy for you to um, fill this out. So let's take a look at our Google tools up here again. So we have got quite a few tools up here. We've learned um, some of them. And as we get going with our digital learning, we're going to learn even more of those tools. So right here we have um, the magical button. So these are the 
undo button. So you, if something happens where you accidentally delete an entire box, oh, don't freak out. Remember, we're going to go to those undo buttons and undo what we just did. Um, same thing with typing. If you accidentally erased your typing, don't worry. It is not all um, gone. All your hard work is not gone. You can go back to this button here, the magical button, and you can click on that undo and it will come right back to you. Now, um, you're going to want to have your mouse clicked here so that you can click and select which box you want to write in. Um, I'm going to tell you how to do that in a second, but let's go over those tools just one more time. Um, right here is your font, so whatever you want your font to look like. I love Oswald, and so it is probably already defaulted to Oswald for you, so I would just leave it. Um, and then right here is your font size. A 14 and 16 is probably a good size for this Venn diagram because those boxes are not huge. Um, now take a look at over here on the side. If you continue all the way down and you may see this more button, just click on it if you don't see everything I see here. Now we worked on the um, underline button last week. Um, so you guys were getting good at underlining the title, which is great. Um, but we also today, I'm going to show you a fancy tool. You do not have to use it if you do not want to, okay? If this is too blowing your mind too much and you don't want to try that button, that's totally fine with me. You can do this without using the bullets button. But if you go all the way to the far right hand side of your computer, you're going to find three um, three little things right here. One is the, uh, this is the alignment. So this makes you, or I'm sorry, this is the, uh, spacing we don't need to work on that right now this is numbering if you're creating a list of, of things you would want the numbers I'll show you what it looks like just like that and then this one is the bullet so on bullets it is kind of creating a list a little bit um, so down here I have chosen the stars because I just like how it looks you can choose whichever one you want but you're gonna create short little um, snippets of information these are not full sentences in your Venn diagram okay so I'm going to just click on star here. Again, I went to bullet and right underneath of it, it pops up a little um, help kind of thing that tells you what that means and what that button does. So a bullet will just give you that bullet. Now, what's kind of cool, um, well, what is cool that I did for you is that you've got the Venn diagram in the background with the two circles overlapping. Now, to make it easier for typing, um, I did not, I gave you shapes inside of the Venn diagram. So you're going to double click on it twice and you're going to be able to type into it. Now, all I did was this, double click on my left mouse, or if you're using a touchpad computer, you just right into the touchpad, double click into the shape. Now, if I double click over here, nothing is going to happen. You are not going to be able to move any of the stuff in the background around, okay? And I did that on purpose so that it would not confuse you and mess you up in the formatting of it. So, I made it as simple as possible. And so, just double click on that box and you will be able to type, okay? Double click, double click, and you can type wherever on here. Now, if you were if you were trying to type and it looks like this, that's because your cursor does not know where to type. So you have to double click on it so it knows where to type. Remember, we are telling our computer what to do. Um, they cannot read our minds. So and let's just click right here. I'm going to start with cactus wren. So what do we know about a cactus wren? Well, I know that it um, likes cactus, or cacti. I know that it's... Um, and if you spell something wrong, you can always go back to it. Um, I'll talk to you about spell check a little bit today. Um, not too much on spelling, but I will show you a fancy trick for that. Um, I also know that it eats, it eats bugs and it eats um, seeds. So if we go back right here, we can always go back to our story as well. So I'm going to go right back to my story and make sure I'm telling you the right thing, bugs, fruit, and seeds. And when you go back down here, now it's not selected. I can't type anything. I have to tell it where to type. And look, my cursor's up here. That's not where I want it to be. I want it to go down here. Wherever that blinking cursor is, that's where it's going to type. So you need to make sure it's in the right spot. And fruit. Okay, then what do we know about a road runner? We can always add more things there too. But remember, I just double clicked on this and I'm going to bring a bullet up here just to make it a little bit more organized. I like to have things organized. 
Um, but if that is too hard for you, do not do bullets. Okay, so I'm going to go back to page six of my book here, and I'm going to pay attention to see what do road runners eat. Oh, I know. It says right here, it helps, uh, its speed helps it to catch lizards, mice, and snakes. Oh, yes. Lizards, mice, and snakes. Lizards, eat. lizards mice, and snakes. And I'm going to, I just pressed the word on enter on my keyboard and it went to the next line. Okay, I just pressed the word enter. It may be a button that says return on your keyboard or a little arrow that looks like this and it will make you go to the next line. Um, and then I learned that it is fast and does not like to fly. Okay, well, now I know there's some things that are the same about them. So we're going to put that in the middle of our Venn diagram. And I'm going to grab my bullet here because I like to show that or uh, my ideas in an organized way. Um, so I know that both of them, uh, let's go back to our story. I know that both of them live in the desert. And remember, I got a double click there to live in the desert. And I'm just going to do one more for you, and then I'm going to show you your uh, Venn diagram so you can pay attention to that. And I do know they're both um, they're both birds. Okay, simple enough. Okay. Birds. Now I started each one of my bullets with a capital letter, and I would suggest that you start after if you're doing bullets after, and if you're doing a sentence. You need to start each one with a capital letter. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop there. Um, so I'm not taking too much of your time up and I want to get to your activity. So what you're going to do, and remember you've got what's different on this side and what's the same between both things on, in the inside of your Venn diagram. So I'm gonna go down to here. I'll show you what your challenge is. So you can give yourself a round of applause because you made it through that part of my video. I know it's a little bit long, but as I'm teaching you how to use these Google tools, it takes a little bit more time. So you're going to go to Google Classroom and you're going to click on 4-13 for today's challenges. Then you're going to click on 4-13, ELA, Rattlesnake, and Kingsnake. And then you're going to read the passages about rattlesnakes and king snakes. There's two of them. And use the Venn diagram to compare both and turn it in. So I'm going to go to your assignment so you can see what it looks like. But um, this is where you find it. So if you're having trouble figuring out where it is, this is where it's going to be. Now it's going to be in a Google Slides format. So it's going to be kind of, remember, Google Slides is kind of like a book. Okay, so boys and girls, I've told you exactly what I want you to do. Now you're in it. So here it says, hey readers, read each passage about rattlesnakes and king snakes and use a Venn diagram on page, and let's go to see what page it is. I can fill that in right now for you. It's going to be on page seven. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna fill that in right now for you so you have it on page seven to compare. And so um, here's your story about rattlesnake. And you're going to go to the king snake story as well. And um, at the end, I will go through and read those for you if you want to listen to me read them. And if you do not, if you want to challenge yourself to read those on your own, you can stop my video at that point. Um, so your challenge is to create a digital Venn diagram and click on the next page, which is seven, to start your Venn diagram and have fun. So remember, all your pages are here on the side. Now, if you're in present mode up here, it's gonna look like this, and you're not gonna be able to see each page separately. So um, you wanna make sure you're out of present mode and make sure you're in just where you can see the book pages over here. So we're gonna go down and I'm gonna show you that Venn diagram. So remember to get to your words. Right now you cannot type anything. It's not gonna let you, you have to double click on it and it will let you type inside of those rectangles, okay? So what's different and what's the same about those snakes? And then the last thing, um, you're done and you can turn it in. So um, right now, if you want to end my video, that's totally fine with me. And you want to try to challenge yourself to read those stories on your own without me, you can. 
But if you'd rather listen to me read them, you can continue with the video right now because that's what I'm going to do. And then we will be done. But again, if you want to read them on your own, that is totally fine with me. You can just stop the video right now. Um, but have fun, and I hope you like learning about snakes today. All right, so I'm going to go and read for those of you who want to listen to me read the story to you. So the first one is rattlesnakes. This is on page two if you want to follow along. Have you ever seen a rattlesnake? I'm going to go ahead and go to present mode for you. Have you ever seen a rattlesnake? If so, you know to stay away. Rattlesnakes are venomous snakes that live in the desert and feed on small critters such as mice, rabbits, and squirrels. A rattlesnake has desert-colored camouflage scales to blend in with its environment. A rattlesnake will hibernate in the winter, and that means it's going to sleep in the winter time. You're not going to see them out and about in the winter. And they come out in the springtime, which is like right now, like Miss McGuire just saw in her garage uh, last week. <laughs> when they are born, they cannot rattle, so you, they're a little bit more dangerous because you can't hear them. And each time the snake sheds its skin, I thought this was interesting, that they they um, get a new segment to their rattle. So there's a little ball-like thing that's on it, and they get a new one every time that they shed. And they shed about twice a year. I think they shed maybe a little bit more when they're younger. Um, be careful next time you go hiking and watch out for those rattlesnakes, because now is the time they are out. All right, so a couple of pictures for you. And you can see that rattle. That's what I was talking about, those segments. So this one has shed. Let's see if we can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven times. So maybe he's about five years old-ish. Um, but that's a pretty interesting fact on that. So I'm going to go on to the next one. Um, this one's all about king snakes. So king snakes come in very bright colors with bands on their bodies. And I'll show you those bands in a second. King snakes live all across North America and can be found in many climates and areas such as forests, deserts, grasslands, and rocky areas. So you can find them all over the United States and not just um, not just in the desert Arizona area. Um, king snakes eat birds, eggs, um, lizards, and rodents, and rodents meaning mice or rabbits, um, small animals. The cool thing about king snakes is that they are immune to venom. So they eat venomous snakes like rattlesnakes and cottonmouth snakes. If you see a king snake, be sure to leave it alone. They are helper snakes and non-venomous. So most of the time they're pretty docile, which means they are pretty um, calm snakes. So they're not going to mess around with you too much unless you are threatening them and they feel scared. Um, but most of the time they're, temp they're pretty pretty calm snakes for the most part and you want to leave them alone still because they are really really good because they take care of some of those scarier snakes like the rattlesnake so um but those are the stories for you um so if you need or know the snake uh, so they come in a lot of different colors most of the time in arizona you can see them looking i have seen one that was red um uh, a couple years ago when i was out hiking um, but most of the time when I see them in the desert, they kind of look like this. We saw one the other day by our mailbox. It was like maybe this. It had to be just born. It was tiny, cute, cute little thing. Um, but those are a little bit about king snakes and rattlesnakes for you. There's so much more information um, that I couldn't put in those two stories. But um, I hope you had fun learning about that. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys by the Venn diagram.